Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Breakfast with the Deacons. This is Deacon Derek Walcott, your host today. And we've got an exciting and powerfully packed show for you this morning. We know that um, last week, I mean, uh, actually on Tuesday, some of you guys didn't get to see us because one of our flow lines was down so that only people on Independent were able to see us live. But remember something, I just, Uncle Derek just wants to share this with you all. We always, we always have a show in the evening. Sometimes it starts around 9 or maybe 10 o'clock. So look out for Breakfast with the Deacons. If you miss us in the morning, you can always get us in the evening. So tell your friends and family if they want to see the number one breakfast show in the morning they could see us in the night all right <laughs> beautiful so you know every day we want to start with Pope Francis's thought for the day and so the thought for the day which I think is so beautiful for today is that is this each of us has a vision of good and evil we have to encourage people to move towards what they think is good Everyone has his own idea of good and evil and must choose to follow the good and fight evil as he conceives them. That would be enough to make the world a better place. Let us make the world a better place. Let, and that is what this show is all about. Making the world a better place by listening to good news listening to good news and we can't get better good news than holy scripture the word of god the word made flesh jesus is the word made flesh and it is only in following jesus can we truly find true peace joy and happiness today i have with me judy joseph musk sweden and we're going to talk about one of the ways that jesus left for us as an example to find that inner peace to find true joy and happiness and you know our country our world needs to be able to come and find that place of peace we need to be able to experience true joy true love and jesus is the only way Judy, wonderful to have you. Listen, you don't mind if I do this. I'm kissing another woman on the set here, this one. Good morning, this, Derek. Good morning, Jay. One of my favorite people, Judy Joseph McSween. Um, this is not the first time that you're on Breakfast with the Deacons, right? No, it's not. You came on board, we spoke, we yes. spoke the last time. I, we even had your daughter on board. Correct, Do you yes. all remember that wonderful young lady? You know, I, I normally do Tuesdays for, for, for Hannah was on with us and she spoke to us about her own journey she spoke to us about you know she's a national footballer under 23 you know um you know loves the the central fc team which came second in the league this year you know they did tremendous wonderful work she spoke about to working with special needs working children. with special needs children yeah, so you know and that was part of our show the last time that she was on board um talking about the young people and the positive things that they're doing young people are doing beautiful things in the country mm -hmm. judy we are going to talk about jesus we're going to talk about his way yeah. and we're going to talk about his prayer life yeah. and especially his contemplative prayer life yes. and where that leads us you know a lot of people we're into the the the, the different kinds of prayer life yes. but contemplative prayer mm -hmm. should become part of all yes. our lives yeah. mm -hmm. you want to share with us i mean you, you're into to, 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 to meditative prayer christian meditation mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about christian meditation okay so if we look at our prayer lives and we, we vision a wheel with spokes mm -hmm. all of us would have written a bike i suppose at some stage in our lives right. and we can look at the spokes and think of it as the different types of prayer we do right. mm -hmm. so we praise the mm -hmm. worship you know um and amidst all these types of prayer you have within the center of the wheel that cog that hub which is still mm -hmm. and if that is not still the wheel doesn't turn so similarly, meditation is seen as that center, that still center of your wheel, to which all your different types of prayer come in. Mm -hmm. So that without meditation, you really are not able to live all that you're praying and hoping mm -hmm. that you live. At some point in time, you need to be still. Jesus says, you know, be still and know that I am God. And 
long ago, people, you know, you'd find people taking time out to just relax, just sit, just center themselves. But this world has become so technology driven. Mm -hmm. The demand to make money is there, so people having one, two, three, four jobs, mm -hmm. and when they're not at their jobs, they're exercising, and they, they're involved in a myriad of things. And they're spending less and less, or I would say, as far as saying, no time no being time. still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that contemplative period where you're able to sit and listen to what that divine presence within you is saying has gone. So that what we have found is that there's really need to reintroduce to Christians the contemplative form of life because as you said at the start, the contemplative form of life cannot exist on one side of the, the road mm -hmm. and you have your other types of prayer and activity on the other side of the road. There must be unity yeah. amongst the both. So here in Trinidad, we have begun reintroducing meditation into mm -hmm. the community, into schools, etc. We have groups around who meet on a regular basis mm -hmm. and we take that opportunity for 20 minutes um, when we meet as a group to just sit still and be in the presence of God. You know, I, I'm glad you kicked that off because there is a brand new book. Mm -hmm. um, there is a brand new book out now on John Paul II mm -hmm. on his mystical prayer life. The word is his mystical prayer life. Mm -hmm. I, I remember um, Cardinal Sch Schborn or something like that. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. He's a he, he is a, a cardinal, and they did an interview with him, and they asked him what struck him about John Paul II yes. and his life, and he, the one thing he said was his prayer life. Yes. This man was, I mean, his, his prayer life was amazing, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of the time he took out for prayer. Um, I remember when one day, they, um, when he was first made bishop, you know, and they first gave him the news, yes. um, he was traveling, you know, and when he reached, when he reached one of the, um, the seminaries and so on, mm -hmm. he went in front of the Blessed Sacrament and he lay prostrate on the floor. And one of the nuns was getting worried because it was hours yes. that, you know, he'd been missing or yes. that he went into the prayer room, mm -hmm. you know. And she came in after, I think, about eight hours of him lying prostrate in front of, uh, yes. of, of, yes. of the Blessed Sacrament. Yes. And they asked him, say, are you okay? Mm -hmm. He says, yes, I'm yes. fine. Yes. Um, the Lord and I are having a conversation, conversation. Yes. and he isn't finished yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And this was the kind of prayer life that he had, yes. you know, a deep, deep prayer life, yes. his connectedness, mm -hmm. right? His connection with Almighty God, yes. silently, yes. silently. Yeah. You know, and, and people seem to, you know, the first thing people ask you is, it, is it better if you, if you meditate than if you do another form of prayer? Mm -hmm. And they have to recognize that it's, it's integrated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even as a member of the charismatic, there are times that you praise, you worship, you shout, you know, your praises to God, but then you need to mm -hmm. silence to hear what he's saying to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I, you know this this incredible guy. I think his name was Monsignor. Um, now your order, Monsignor order says um, the unselfishness and his mystical side. This is Saint John Paul II drew even drew even the most worldly to appreciate his unique presence. This is a pope who would often upset travel schedules by halting to pray at great length in front of a tabernacle or at a Marian shrine. In fact, he promised the Madonna to visit a shrine for every vocation added to one particular monastery that suddenly boomed with new vocation. He walked five miles to one just to pray. This was a man who understood contemplative prayer. Yes. You know, and, and people, you know, if, when you're in a hurry, you're rushing to work and stuff, you think to yourself, okay, well, I'll pray later in the day. And mm -hmm. they don't realize that it's important to ground yourself in prayer as you start. And once you do that, everything sort of flows. There is a resonance that is set up, you know, when you take that time out to center yourself, connect with God, and then the day just unfolds as it should. Yes. Um, you know, I give people the example of many a time I may be running late. Mm -hmm. 
and I think to myself, oh my gosh, and I say, no, this is the time I need to, to pray. To, to pray. Yeah, yeah. And I do my meditation, and then I head out, and I'm looking at the time, and it's, it's running. And then I get a call from a client that says, Judy, I'm running late. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I say, no problem. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it, just, it, just, it has a way of just setting the priorities for you right. that you couldn't do for yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a transformation that takes place without any effort from you. All you need to do is to just surrender yourself to the discipline of that silent practice. 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening. Judy, you know, when we were coming down, you were sharing with me mm -hmm. um, Bishop Jason Gordon. Yes. You know, what is his connection with this whole thing of meditation, of prayer, and so on? Yes. We have had, you know, the honor, I would say, and the pleasure of when we made the approach to him to be the patron for Christian meditation in the Caribbean. And this actually, this request actually came from the world community, mm -hmm. not even from the local community. It stemmed from there. And when we approached him, he very graciously accepted the offer to be the patron for the Caribbean. Bishop Jason, of course, being the bishop for both St. Vincent and the, and the Grenadines, Grenadines and, and Barbados. Barbados. Yeah. And what was even more, you know, fascinating for us was the fact that recently we had an essential teaching retreat mm -hmm. for Caribbean groups, Caribbean meditators, and he was able to take the time out to join us. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that that group had come together in, in a long time. Mm -hmm. And him being just been appointed as patron for the region, mm -hmm. it was you know an extreme honor to have him present mm -hmm. at that retreat mm -hmm. and to share with us his practice of Christian meditation, which he's been doing since he's a student. Yes. And you know, reinforcing for us the importance of the contemplative life. You know, one of the, 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 the little talks he, he gave was in terms of the Mary and Martha, mm -hmm. and people wonder, you know, who had the better role. Right, right. And really reinforcing to us that there's no better role, that mm -hmm. both Mary and Martha had a role, and the roles were both vitally important. Yes. Mary had the contemplative role, Martha was the more active getting things done, but the two roles are, part, are, are, are necessary. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Christians, we really need to be able to merge those two roles. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I remember um, Archbishop Joseph Harris yes. um, sharing with us that we should develop good spiritual habits. Yes. Contemplative prayer is a good spiritual habit. And the psychologists tell us that if we do something 28 times consecutively, between 28 and 29 times consecutively, mm -hmm. it becomes a habit. Yes. So you can either have a positive habit or a negative habit. Mm -hmm. If you decide that I would like to pray and take time out to pray every single day, that 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the evening, yes. and you do that for 28 times consecutively without breaking it, it would become a good spiritual habit. Yes. Bishop Jason Gordon, mm -hmm. in one of his retreats, I think it may have been not this year, but last year in his Lenten retreat, he promoted very much mm -hmm. praying, you know, five times a day yes. for all Catholics. Mm -hmm. You know, and he said, I would like you all to set. He said, you know, you use this thing, this thing they call a cell phone. He says, because, but one of the, the, the beautiful things about using this cell phone is this, that you can set your alarm on the cell phone. Yes. So he encouraged us, and I followed it immediately, where I set my cell phone, and I want to encourage you to set your cell phone, to alarm at 6 a.m. in the morning, alarm at 12 midday, mm -hmm. alarm at 3 p.m., time of divine mercy, and alarm at 6 p.m. in the evening, right? And let it ring. And at those times, take time out to pray. Take that time out to pray. Mm -hmm. And it can just be a three-minute prayer. For me, I, I say the Angelus. So I say the Angelus at 6 o'clock every morning. Mm -hmm. I say it at midday. Mm -hmm. At 3 o'clock, I will either do the Angelus or the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Mm -hmm. And then 6 o'clock in the evening again, yes. I will take time out to pray again. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the Memorare, yeah. you know, during this time of Easter. And you could add to that your contemplative practice and just be silent. Just be silent. Just be so, silent. <clears throat> you mm -hmm. know, even I had some Muslim friends of mine, we were, we were having a session at the University of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And so when I took my time,
time out. Yes. You know, I said, guys, it's it's. I need to take a, some time out here. Mm -hmm. You know, they said, what are you taking time out for? Yes. I said, I need to take some time out to pray. Yes. It was at that time, 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Yes. So I took some time out. I said, please excuse me for a little while. Mm -hmm. You know, so I went, just took a little time out, and then came back in, and they said, Deacon, you know, what was this time out about? I said, well, we pray, you know, mm -hmm. at least five times a day. Mm -hmm. And they looked at me strangely. You Catholics pray five times a day? Mm -hmm. So I told them, of course, put on my glasses, and I said, I am not Ian Allen, and it is not alleged. <laughs> we do pray, or we are supposed to pray yes. at least five times a day. Mm -hmm. Throughout the day, mm -hmm. our, our lives should be lives of prayer, mm -hmm. you know? You know, and Derek, as you mentioned the Muslims, you know, meditation is a universal practice. Good. And one of the things that was very interesting in that retreat that we went to in Miami for the Caribbean community is that we had, a, well, people from the Caribbean islands. We had 10 people from Trinidad. We had people from Barbados, um, St. Vincent. We actually had Mexico on board, and then we had people from the US. And people came from different religious mm -hmm. backgrounds and from different professions. We had an anesthetist, we had a surgeon, we had an engineer, we had nuns, we had a Mexican priest. And a lot of times we take this diversity to think of separation, segregation, disagreement. But it was a beautiful experience having these diverse individuals present for a meditation retreat. A group of people who are committed to meditate 20 times in 20 minutes sorry in the morning 20 minutes in the evening and even though though the mexicans did not speak english right. and you would have thought that would have been a challenge mm -hmm. the meditation was so unifying <laughs> you know <laughs> right, amazingly right, right. unifying and we probably meditated about five times for the day while Fantastic. we were there yes you no know, but if you said something th th this is so beautiful it's so mm -hmm. encompassing mm -hmm. it's so all-embracing that regardless of our our religion, regardless of our language, we can be in a room with people who don't speak the same language, but we have one language, yes. the language of silent prayer. Correct. The language of silence, yes. where we could just allow ourselves mm -hmm. to be connected, yes. you know, to the Almighty. Yes. You know, Jesus, when he went into the garden, he asked his disciples, couldn't you not stay at least one hour with me in prayer. Yeah. It was not an oral prayer mm -hmm. because Jesus was alone silently yes. praying to the Father. Mm -hmm. And he asked his disciples, you know, the, 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 the three of them who always lying with him, Peter, James, and John, yes. you know what I mean, the mm -hmm. clique, yes. you know, he says, the inner circle, mm -hmm. come and spend time with me in yeah. prayer. Mm -hmm. Come and spend time with me in prayer. Mm -hmm. Jesus, you know, I, I did a, a whole research on the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. Jesus could not survive Good Friday, if he did not have that time of prayer to prepare himself for what was going to happen on Good Friday. Yeah. He would not have been able to do it. So he went and he spent some time with prayer. Mm -hmm. So many times we read in the Bible, Jesus went off into the hills yes. alone, alone to pray. You know, and uh, they said one aid, going back to that in, in, in important thing that I was telling you all about John Paul II, they said those working at the Vatican or other offices would be shocked to find John Paul II praying in a closet or spread out for hours on a cold marble floor, his arms outstretched to form a cross. Here is the charisma, the presence that drew presidents and even Mikhail Gorbachev. One, one aide even found him praying in a washroom, kneeling in front of a sink. And every morning when he emerged from the refectory, the refectory, right after breakfast, he would walk through the sacristy and kiss all the relics kept on a table next to the altar. This man was a man of deep prayer, yes. of a deep prayer life. Yeah. You know, because the meditation really facilitates that personal relationship with the divine presence in you. Say that again. The meditation yes. facilitates the development of the relationship with that divine presence in you. Because you become much more connected, more conscious of the fact that you are a temple of God. That Stop. 
stop. <laughs> hold, hold on. I want you all to get that because you know this 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 goes this goes incredible because it says so many times I saw John Paul's face after contemplation and adoration visibly changed and happy. Yes. Continue. So, yes. So, you know, a lot of people seek meditation for inner peace. And, but not all of them are conscious of the fact that the inner peace surfaces because of that realization and that connectivity that you now have with the divine presence within you. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's not just the silence that bring about, brings about the inner peace. It's really that oneness that you have now with that divine presence mm -hmm. that is within you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is that spiritual dimension, and there is also that transitions now in a term of physiological dimension, because when you're at peace with yourself, you're not stressed. And if you're not stressed, then you're less susceptible to stress-related diseases, and we have a myriad of them. Yes. You know, so it's a, it's a whole holistic... Um, development that you have through this ongoing practice. Um, during that meditation retreat, we had somebody from the Zen community as well, the Buddhist community as well, and she had been practicing Buddhism for a number of years, and she said there was still a certain emptiness from her, uh, within her, and she had the opportunity to participate in the Christian meditation and to hear more about what it was all about. And in hearing about it, she felt that that was the, 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 the missing link for her, that emptiness that she was feeling, was that appreciation that within her, that there is that spirit, indwelling spirit. Well, all of us are temples of the Holy Spirit. Temples of the Holy Spirit, temples of the divine. Yes. You know, the God who created the universe. Yes. And if we, could if we could connect with Almighty God, mm. And, and understand that beautiful connection that God lives within us and we are temples of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Our relationship with others also will changes. Also change. That's correct. It will change. Mm -hmm. You know, if we are all temples of the Holy Spirit, do you believe that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit? And if we believe that we are all temples of the Holy Spirit, and the only way, I'm telling you, the only way to truly come into that full realization is to spend time in prayer. To spend time in prayer, yes. you know, um, long intellectual debates. You know, they, they, they were they were talking about John Paul II again, and I'm going to be talking about Saint John Paul II for a long time. So many times I saw his face after contemplation and adoration, visibly changed and happy. Said one person close to him during prayer, he seemed to be in a continual conversation with God, like Moses who spoke with God face to face during prayer. Karal Watia did not notice anything that happened around him. He seemed to lose all sense of time to the extent that his secretary at a certain point would have to shake him out of this extraordinary state of concentration because of the other commitments that awaited him. Yes. You know, and many of us think that meditating for long periods is, it's not fruitful, or it's not possible for me to sit still for this length of time. But we have had the experience of meditating with primary school children, and they were able to go into that stillness and silence like that. Yeah. You know, you move from a cacophony within the schoolroom mm -hmm. to silence. Yeah. Um, boys tend to be to, said to be very hyper. Yeah. And we have seen 200 boys in a cathedral, again yeah. moving from the noise and the, the ruckus to silence and stillness. Yeah. And emerging from it, commenting on the inner peace they felt and the connection, that closer connection with the divine. Blessed Mother Teresa. And I share this sometimes when I give my talks. Blessed Mother Teresa, and I want to give this a real, this is really real, this is true. Blessed Mother Teresa with her sisters when she established her order and so on. One of the things she said was that every morning, right, when we wake up, right, we will go and spend two hours in front of the Blessed Sacrament mm -hmm. in contemplative prayer. Mm -hmm. Silent. In front of Almighty God. Silent. 
to be able to connect with him before we get into our busy mm -hmm. way of life. Mm -hmm. And as the, the Sisters of Charity grew and the organization became more and more, um, I guess, important mm -hmm. and more and more work came towards yeah. them in mm -hmm. terms of assisting and helping mm -hmm. the poor, the wretched, those broken, you know. Um, the sisters came to her and a couple of the sisters came and they said, listen, mother, could we not, there are so many people coming to us. We just don't have enough time to deal with them. Could we just cut the time that we spend in morning prayer in front of the Blessed Sacrament? Mm. Instead of two hours, could we yeah. just break it down into one hour mm. so we'll have more time to deal with them? Yeah. And she said no. She said no. Correct. The best beautiful mm -hmm. saint mm -hmm. said no. Mm -hmm. She says, if we have so many challenges, if there are so many people coming to us, mm -hmm. from now on we'll spend three hours <laughs> in front of the Blessed Sacrament yeah. instead of two. Yeah. She understood completely, which is just uh, just sharing with, with, with that you just shared with us, yes. you know, how important Word. it was, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, for us to spend that time because it is God's work, it is not ours. Yes. And God will provide everything that we need. We just have to put God first. And, and you know, and that's the whole thing with meditation. You, you surrender yourself completely. It's not a time about asking God for anything. It's not a time about thanking God for, for anything. It's just a time of being in his presence and letting him do what he has to do. Later this year, we actually have Father Lawrence Freeman coming in mm -hmm. to the region. Right. Um, he is going to be coming into Trinidad. Father Lawrence Freeman, um, just to remind viewers is the director of the world community for christian yeah. meditation he's been here he was here two years yes. ago he's coming back again and this time we're actually going to be doing a weekend retreat with him for the meditators mm. and he again will be doing talks with the public with the schools etc we are also hoping to engage the interreligious organization because mm -hmm. like i said meditation is something that is founded universal it's universal in addition to which he is also also going to be traveling up the Caribbean, St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Vincent, mm -hmm. where um, we have already made connection. They started groups there and really, you know, get people to, to that full understanding of how Christian meditation is rooted in the our tradition. Because a lot of people, when they think of meditation, they think it's Eastern. Well, <laughs> you've been watching Breakfast with the Deacons. All about good news, prayer is good news. Make that time off. Remember, 28 times consecutively, it becomes a good spiritual habit. I encourage everybody to spend some time in prayer. This is Deacon Derek Walcott and Judy Joseph McSween saying, have a blessed weekend. We are gone. Spend time in prayer this weekend. Breakfast with Deacon. See you on Tuesday. Amen. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> time flies fast. Yes, yes. Time flies fast. This is. I glanced at us for two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs>